Hey everyone, in this video we're going to talk about some lettering pro tips. The things that I've learned that have made my life so much easier as we work through glyphs and I'll be using them as we go through our typeface. So let's take a look. Back in our glyphs interface I'm just going to pull out some demo shapes so you can see what I'm going to be talking about. First I'll, I'll start with an ellipse. Something that happens quite frequently is we have these pair of handles and we'll delete one of these handles and by deleting a handle it also deletes the opposite's handle and it turns these into corners. Now this corner bit moves one handle but there is no handle on the other side. This can be a strength and a weakness based off of what you're drawing but it's kind of hidden how we get that handle back. If we hold down our option key and we click on the path it'll bring up our handles. It was really hard to see but now we've got our handles back here and here. And just like that if we double click back on our paths here we get our original handles back and we can move them to get back what we need. Second is our overlap. So when we're drawing a shape we'll draw a capital F for example. When we're drawing something or maybe we'll use our capital H rather. With these types of letter forms, instead of drawing the character as one whole piece, we're going to draw it in individual pieces. In doing so, we allow ourselves an easier time when we go back to manipulate these. Say I want to move this stem out because it's too narrow, I can move it out. Or if I want this to be a little bit wider, a little bit taller, whatever it may be, we can do it something like that. Similarly, we've had, there's another way. I like to keep individual components, but some designers like to draw the letter form out. So let's use the capital F as an example. So in a shape that might have a corner, what you'll often see is this corner overlap. Now I held shift there and I probably shouldn't have but you'll see this corner that sort of wraps in on itself. The same thing as before is that that makes it easier for us to go in and change that later. It also makes sure that we don't have two points that mismatch. So if I were drawing this as a capital E, for example, and I drew my letter, you know, shape like this, and I was just sort of glazing past it, you'd notice that these paths don't necessarily align and they can get all the way down to one M's worth of distance away and it can be obnoxious. So that's why some designers will do this instead. It allows us the same flexibility as using individual shapes that I can select one path and move it over without having to worry about manipulating or breaking the letter form as it's going. The next one that I want to talk about is moving points along a curve. So if I have a curve and we'll bring in this shape here again so I have some curves to look at. Oftentimes, and I'll do this quite a bit, we'll get a point in a spot that's pretty close to what we want but not quite and we know that we have to move a point and some handles or whatever it may be. If you hold the option key down, so we'll hold option again, I can select this point and I can move the point without moving the handles. Now that preserves a lot of the curve coming out from the other points as well as maintaining the relationship between the points and the handles. And that'll help us later on as we draw some other letter forms and work through what those curves are looking like. The last pro tip and one that's probably the most useful out of all of these is going to be using and reusing components. Let's say, for example, I'm going to draw a capital H with a serif. So I'll have my stem here and my stem over there. And I'll draw in a crossbar really quickly. Might be a little high, but it's not too terrible. And let's say I'm going to draw in a serif. And maybe my serif, I'm drawing a you know humanistic serif font, so it's got a little bit of uh, character or flair to it and we'll say it, it's going to have something in here and then it'll round out 
has a rounded top to it and then it'll be flat in the middle there. This is not the way I would draw points by the way. Remember, I like to keep we like to keep all these things nice and square. But you can see I drew this and there's no handles there, so I'll use the trick we just learned. Hold Option and click on the path to fix that. I'll also get rid of some of these unnecessary points. So I'm drawing like my brain is an illustrator. Again, we, I'm going to go back through and hold Shift to get rid of, to square these points up. So I'm holding Shift to make sure these are perfectly perpendicular. And I'm going to get rid of the points that I don't think I need. We'll probably also get rid of this point, and here is where we'll give it a little bit of flare. Of course, if we need a point in the middle here to pull that down, we can certainly do that. But we'll imagine that this is my serif. It's kind of a wonky serif, especially for a quick demo. But it might look something like this, and this is something that I would want to reuse throughout my font. If I double click to select it all and then right click, I can choose to any number of options. This one, I'm going to do component from selection and I'm going to name this. Once I name it, it pulls it open into a new file and if you'll look right here, it says serif-a. Once we start to design multiple letter forms, if we have them typed next to each other, they'll end up looking like this. And I can double click to get from one to the next. So if I double click on my H, it'll pull that open. And now you'll notice that my serif looks a little bit different than my other letter forms. Here, all of a sudden, it's this checkerboard and it has lost its points and outlines and everything's gone crazy. Well, I'll show you what it's useful for. If I hold Option, I'll duplicate it over here to the right. This is really a crazy serif. I'm going to choose a transformation. I'm just going to flip it so that we can see how it's going to work. And then I'll do this with another one down here. And we'll imagine the feet. We'll live something like this. Again, I'm going to flip these two so that I'm drawing just the craziest capital H you've ever seen. And now all of these are functioning components. So if I go back to this component one, and I'll manipulate something with both of these in view. So let's say I want this serif. It's actually too thin for me. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab these two bottom points here. I'm going to move those down. You can see in my glyph that all of my things are changing. So because this is a component, it's reacting everywhere else that it's being featured. This is true if I go back to this serif. If I scaled this, if I had made this smaller for some reason, it's true if I've flipped it, you've seen that I have distorted those two, that if I go in and I change these things, it will continue to apply to this component. I particularly like to use components, especially as measuring tools, bringing them in. When we go back to our font file here, you'll see now I've got an H in the A slot, which is a little weird. But when I scroll down, we have an other section. And here is listed my component, so it's listed my serif. We can use components really for any, of, any use that we want. That was a practical example. We'll use them for less practical examples later. So those are some of my pro tips as we go into drawing our letter forms. There's just one more video before we start to really get into the nitty gritty. So keep on going, you're doing great.